Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 16th of August. Civilian killed by terrorist in India's Jammu and Kashmir second attack in two days. Chinese military ship docks at Sri Lankan port despite Indian concern. And Pakistanis give up favorite street snack as inflation bites. And now for all the details, a civilian identified as a Kashmiri Pandit was shot dead by a terrorist in Shopian in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday, while his brother was also injured in the incident, the second such attack in two days. Meanwhile, in another incident, at least seven Indian border police personnel were killed after their bus fell into a gorge in the Union Territory. The death toll was likely to rise as at least eight others were critically injured. In yet another incident of targeted killing, a civilian was killed and his brother injured after they were shot at by terrorists in an apple orchard in Shopian district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday. The deceased was identified as Sunil Kumar, a Kashmiri Pandit. His injured brother Pintu Kumar was shifted to a hospital and the area was cordoned off. This came a day after a policeman and a civilian were injured in two separate grenade attacks in the Kashmir Valley on India's Independence Day. At least 25 persons, mainly members of the region's minority Hindu community and non-locals, have lost their lives in targeted killings by terrorists this year. So, the sound of the fire came out. When the fire came out, what happened after the fire came out? What happened after the fire came out? So, we came and saw that the fire came out. The fire was a bad thing. So, the people took it and took it and took it. Meanwhile, in another incident in Jammu and Kashmir, at least seven personnel of Indo-Tibetan border police were killed after their bus rolled off a mountainous road and fell into a gorge in Pehelgam area. The toll was likely to rise as at least eight others were grievously injured and were being treated at an army hospital in the Himalayan region. And a Chinese military service ship, Yuan Wang 5, docked at Sri Lanka's Chinese-built port of Hamantota on Tuesday after a delay of several days because of opposition to the visit from India, which vies with China for influence in crisis at Sri Lanka. Reports suggest that Yuan Wang 5 will now berth for only three days to stock up on fuel, food and other essentials. <music> The Chinese survey vessel Yuan Wang 5 docked on Tuesday at Sri Lanka's Chinese built port of Humber Tota, a move likely to stoke concern in neighboring India about the growing influence of its bigger and more powerful rival. Both India and the United States earlier voiced concern with the Sri Lankan government over the military ship's visit. India had opposed the docking of the ship, which analysts describes as a high-tech ship for tracking objects in space, as it fears China could use the port near the main Asian-Europe shipping route as a military base. Foreign security analysts say the Yuan Wang-5 is one of the China's latest generation space tracking ships, used to monitor satellite, rocket and intercontinental ballistic missile launches. The Pentagon says the Yuan Wang ships are operated by the Strategic Support Force of the People's Liberation Army. Hours after the ship docked, a Sri Lankan cabinet spokesman said the island nation was working to ensure there was no friction between friendly countries. Hope and request China, our long-standing friend, to assist us in restructuring our debts and secure an IMF bailout as soon as possible and provide with some meaningful bridging finance. Sri Lanka, which needs the support of both India and China as it struggles with its worst economic crisis, indicates, initially granted the ship permission for a five-day replenishment stay in Hambantota from August 11. It later asked China to delay the vessel's arrival, citing the need for more consultations. Before the arrival of the ship, India gave Sri Lanka's Air Force a Donia 228 aircraft for maritime surveillance, 
Reports suggest that Yuan Wang 5 will now berth for only three days to stock up on fuel, food and other essentials. China Merchant Sport Holdings signed a 99-year lease in 2017 to operate the Deep Sea Hambon Tota port. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Yanbin said the Chinese ship was not interfering with any other country. And the Taliban marked a year in power on Monday with celebrations by the group's fighters and leaders as Afghanistan struggles with rising poverty, drought, malnutrition and fading hope among women that they will have a decisive role in the country's future. Some people fired celebratory gunshots in the air in Kabul and Taliban fighters gathered, waving the group's black and white flag to mark a year since they marched into Afghan capital Kabul after a stunning series of battlefield victories. A few hundred people, including supporters, soldiers and officials, gathered at the square in front of the U.S. Embassy to mark the day. In a ceremony attended by Taliban government ministers, Acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki said their rule had brought security where the United States had failed and said the group wanted positive relationships with the world. The country is physically safer than it was when the hardline Islamist movement was fighting against US-led foreign forces and their Afghan allies. Yet that relative security cannot mask the scale of the challenge the Taliban face in setting Afghanistan on a path of economic growth and stability. There are huge pressures on the economy, caused in large part by the country's isolation as foreign governments refuse to recognize its rulers. Development aid upon which the country relied so heavily has been cut, as the international community demands that the Taliban respect the rights of Afghans, particularly girls and women, whose access to work and education has been curtailed. The Taliban is demanding that 9 billion US dollars in central bank reserves held overseas be returned, but talks with the United States face hurdles, including the U.S. demands that the Taliban leader, subject to sanctions, step down from his position as second in command at the bank. The Taliban refused to see to these demands, saying that they respect all Afghans' rights within the framework of the interpretation of Islamic law. And until there is a major shift in either side's position, there is no immediate fix in sight for spiraling prices, rising joblessness and hunger that would get worse as winter sets in. Moving on, government employees and pensioners in Pakistan-administered Kashmir recently staged a demonstration to demand the promised hike in their salaries and pensions by the Pakistan government. The protesters accused the Pakistani establishment of being apathetic towards their plight. Several government employees and pensioners in Pakistan-administered Kashmir recently held a protest to demand an increase in their salaries and pensions from the Pakistan government. The protesters said they were promised at least 15% increment in their salaries from July, but Pakistan government, even after passing the notification in the budget, did not raise the salaries. They said the soaring inflation has already shaken their domestic budgets, but Islamabad has remained apathetic towards their plight. लेकिन हकुमत आजाद कश्मीर ने बजट में वाजिया मंजूरी देने के बावजूद भी हमारा नोटिफिकेशन इस वक्त तक जारी नहीं किया हम हम कोई और नई चीज तो मांग नहीं रहे सिर्फ अपनी तनख्वाहों में इजाफा मांग रहे हैं और कोई नई चीज नहीं मांग रहे हैं इसलिए मेरी आपसे गुजारिश है कि आप लोग यहां से हिलें जुलेंगे नहीं the protesters blamed instead of providing any aid to the people in the already backward region, economic losses faced by Pakistan due to policy paralysis are also compensated from territories under its illegal control. Well, Pakistan government on Tuesday increased petrol price by over 6 rupees per litre, a day after Finance Minister Mifta Ismail said the country is not in a position to afford fuel subsidies. Rampant inflation has hit people across Pakistan, forcing some of the people to even give up on their favourite street snacks. A report. Flaky fried flat bread is a popular, cheap and tasty snack for many Pakistanis. 
but due to rampant inflation people are being forced to tighten their belts and fans of puri and the sweet or savory dishes that go with them are falling victim a year ago the flat bread puri cost around 20 pakistani rupees each but now the prices are double the higher prices of puri reflect an increase in the cost of raw materials including wheat flour cooking oil while vegetables milk and electricity costs have all inflated substantially mohammad javed abbasi manager at a roadside eatery in karachi said half of their regular customers have stopped coming gai ki wajah se kaam karobar mein farak to pada hai hame ne sabko farak pada hai mai gai ki wajah se puri mein hamare jo customer the wo bhi kam ho gaye hain puri khane wale bhi log kam ho gaye hain the statistics bureau announced on august 1 that the country's inflation rate reached 24.9% in july the highest in 14 years mehangai bahut zyada ho gayi hai middle class tabke ki kamat tut gayi hai is mehangai ke wajah se grocery bahut zyada mehangi ho gayi hai एवरेज इनकम अर्न पर पर्सन इन अयर इज वन थाउजेंड सिक्स amid the soaring inflation and a news from bangladesh at least six people were killed after a fire broke out at a plastic factory in bangladesh capital city of dhaka fire service officials said on monday it was not immediately clear what caused the fire which broke out in the building in chok bazar in the old part of dhaka one local resident claimed the fire had started after a gas tank exploded fire service officials at the scene said they had pulled the six bodies from a hotel in the building adding they suspected the victims had been asleep when the fire started ekhane fire fighting ebong uddhar porichalona porichalona korechi amra 6 ta last peyechi e porjonto छा लाश पे अपनारा बरशाल होटेल ये होटेल उपरे रात घुम थार्वस्था छो एम ही धारणा A moving on the world soccer's governing body FIFA has suspended the All India Football Federation AIFF citing undue influence from third parties. The suspension also means that the under 17 women's world cup which was scheduled to take place in India in October cannot be held in the country as planned. FIFA in a statement said the suspension will be lifted once an order to set up a committee of administrators to assume the powers of the AIFF executive committee has been repealed and the AI IFF administration regains full control. India Supreme Court has disbanded the AIFF in May and appointed a three-member committee to govern the sport, amend the football body's constitution and conduct elections that have been pending for 18 months. The move by the FIFA prompted the Indian government on Tuesday to approach the top court which will hear the issue on August 17th. Indian national team khelegi nahi to ranking pe to asar padega. तो रिपकाशंस तो ठीक नहीं है बट एज आई सेड आई एम एन ऑप्टिमिस्ट कि ये कल परसों तक सारा सॉर्ट आउट हो जाएगा Well the small Parsi community in India's western Mumbai celebrated their traditional new year Navroz by offering prayers at the fire temple in the city on Tuesday the occasion was celebrated after a two year hiatus due to covid-19 pandemic Members of the Parsi community of Zoroastrian celebrated their traditional New Year Navroz by offering prayers to their prophet Zarathustra at their places of worship in India's western Mumbai city on Tuesday. Navroz is celebrated on the first day of the Farvardin, the first month of the Zoroastrian calendar. On this day, the Parsis decorate their homes with the floral garlands and chalk designs. There's usually a community get together in the evenings when all the members congregate to celebrate the occasion. We are trying to make it up for the last 2 years. Because family se mile ke family members se hain ke milne ke liye. India is home to the largest population of Zoroastrians which stands at nearly 70,000 mostly concentrated in the western part of the country. That's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.